Hey guys, Derek here from Back to Reality. So we're currently in the second half of April. This video should be all about the buds popping up in our new garlic bed, or about how our hugel culture mounds fared through their second and third winter. But unfortunately, it's not really feeling all that much like spring around here yet. See, I don't know what the weather's been like in your neck of the woods, but here in eastern Ontario, we just had another huge winter storm a few days ago. And though the snow's mostly melted again now, its late arrival meant that we had to delay all of our spring plants. But luckily, we do have one more experiment from last season to tell you about, so let's go chat about that for a bit and let Mother Nature here catch up to the calendar. Oh yeah, but before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know up front that this experiment didn't exactly work. Now, I know that probably seems like a bit of a spoiler, but honestly, I just didn't want anybody sitting through four or five minutes of manufactured suspense hoping for a solution, only to find out that I don't actually have one yet. But I do think this is an interesting idea, so I still want to tell you guys about it, and I'm hoping that with your help, we might actually have better success next season. You guys always have great ideas and suggestions, so please stick around until the end and let us know what you think in the comments. Okay, now that we got all that out of the way, let's go talk tomatoes. Tomatoes come in many shapes and sizes. They're packed with nutrients and nothing compares to their sweet, juicy flavor. No matter which way you slice them, tomatoes are delicious. Or at least they used to be. You see, if you've ever tasted a fresh-picked, homegrown tomato, then you'll know exactly what I mean. But that's the problem. Most people don't eat tomatoes fresh from the garden anymore. Instead, they come from the grocery store. Even us, we grew hundreds of the little red gems last year, and yet here we are again, buying tomatoes from the grocery store that come from halfway around the world. No flavor, questionable nutrition, and a hefty price tag to boot. But why? Well, as I alluded to a moment ago, it's pretty hard to pick fresh, homegrown tomatoes when your garden looks like this. And unfortunately for most of us, that is the case for a significant portion of the year. But tomatoes need nice, warm, sunny weather, and, uh... So, what's a tomato lover to do? Well, we've tried freezing them, and we've tried canning them. There's all kinds of ways to preserve your crop for future use, but unfortunately, all of those methods require drastically altering your tomatoes from their fresh, juicy form. If only there was a natural way to preserve tomatoes whole, to be eaten throughout the winter as though they were fresh, just like we do with potatoes and other root vegetables. I mean, it's 2018, is that really too much to ask? Well, after some digging around online, that question led me to a short article about a farmer from Burundi near Tanzania who claims to have figured it out. By the way, there's a link to the article in the description. So the story goes that this tomato farmer was frustrated by the fact that he could only sell about half his produce during the months of August and September. Because during that time, everyone else was harvesting and selling tomatoes too, so the supply outweighed the demand. Meaning that he had to sell the first half of his crop for next to nothing, and then painfully watch the rest go to waste. But being a wise entrepreneur, he realized that if he could just figure out a way to keep a portion of his produce from spoiling until the demand was higher, then he could make much more revenue and produce far less waste. So he got to work. He tried packing them in water and sand and even tried burying them underground. But unfortunately, nothing worked. That was until he noticed some unspoiled tomatoes at the foot of his banana tree. Eureka! Because the soil around his banana trees was amended with copious amounts of wood ash. So apparently, as a result of his discovery, he began packing his tomatoes in cardboard boxes filled with ash and kept them there for five or six months without any negative effects on the tomatoes themselves. The article even quotes a local scientist who claims that there should be no toxicity concerns with this method, meaning that the tomatoes should still be safe to eat. Seems pretty incredible, right? Well, the problem is that while I could find a small number of people online discussing this proposed solution from a theoretical perspective, to date, I haven't actually found anybody who seems to have replicated the results. So at the end of last season, I figured, ah, what the heck, might as well be us. Because we already had an appropriately sized cardboard box and tons of tomatoes, so the only thing we were missing was the ashes. But unfortunately, given the time of year, our only source of wood ash production was our fire pit. 
And since those ashes had been exposed to rain and other potential contaminants, we decided that a closed system would be better. And luckily, it just so happened that we had a little old wood stove kicking around, so we set it up outside and lit a fire. This worked out really well, because it also doubled as a fun place to hang out in the evening and was a great way to warm up on damp mornings while working in the garden. So over the next couple weeks, we began collecting bucketfuls of ash until we felt that we had enough to fill the box. Next, we sifted it through some hardware cloth that I stapled to a simple wooden frame. This removed all the larger chunks of charcoal, leaving only the fine gray dust. After the bottom of the box was covered, we began placing in the tomatoes. Plus, it occurred to us that if this method works for tomatoes, it might also work for peppers, so what the heck, we threw some of those in as well. Finally, we sifted in enough additional ash to fully cover the fruit, sealed the box with some packing tape, and then placed it on a shelf in the basement. We figured that would be the best location, as it tends to remain dark and cool throughout the year. And then, as is usually the case with our experiments, all that was left was to wait. So fast forward to spring, and we've finally got some interesting results to share with you. So let's head down to the basement and have a look. So the box has been sitting here now for about six months, and other than a couple of quick peeks, it's remained undisturbed the entire time. But don't forget, the claim was that the tomatoes could be preserved for up to five or six months without any negative effects. So they should still be normal, fresh looking tomatoes. Emphasis on should. But before I show you the final results, let's first have a quick look at their condition during our halfway check at about two and a half months. Not knowing what to expect, I was a little nervous to start digging around in the ash, but I quickly found one of the tomatoes and was surprised to see that it was still intact. However, it definitely didn't feel normal. It was squishy, and though the skin was still firm, it felt like the inside was liquid, almost like a water balloon. Now, in hindsight, I wish I would have removed one of the tomatoes and cut into it. It would have been really interesting to see what was going on on the inside of the fruit. But unfortunately, at the time, I thought that it was more important that I not disturb them any more than I already had. I'll likely do that differently if we do this again. Anyway, we checked them again about a month ago at the five month mark. And you know what? I'm not even gonna bother showing you what they looked like then because I am certain that they have not changed at all in the month since. You'll see what I mean. Let's have a look. So while at the halfway point, the tomato kind of reminded me of a water balloon, check this out. Now it's more like a raisin. Look, they're all like this. They're shriveled up like they just came out of a dehydrator. I wonder what the peppers are like. Gross, same thing. That's so weird. All right, well, this is obviously not the results that we were hoping for, but dehydrating fruit is another way of preserving it. So, I, I mean, it's possible that we might be able to salvage this. I'm gonna run this upstairs and give it a quick rinse and we'll see what it looks like. Well, that's pretty disappointing. Whenever I saw how shriveled they were, I was hoping that they might, best case, turn out to be sort of like sun-dried tomatoes. Wood ash is highly alkaline and so it has antibacterial properties. It's difficult for bacteria to grow in it. So I was hoping that though they're shriveled and obviously not fresh looking anymore, that they might still be preserved. But as soon as it got wet, it was pretty obvious right away. Oh, it smells really strong of must and mold. It's, it's frankly pretty disgusting. So either we did something horribly wrong or else this method simply doesn't work. And that's where you guys come in. We'd really love to hear what you thought about this experiment. And better yet, have you ever tried anything like this on your own? And if so, how did it work out for you? It would be pretty awesome if we could make this method work next season. So if you have any suggestions at all, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear about them. But in the meantime, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. And we'll see you again soon.